Hello, and thank you for joining us at the Chef Corner. My name's Trey Goodwin, uh, instructor at Gulf Coast State College in the Culinary Management Program. Today we're going to conquer the perfect cup of coffee. I have two wonderful guests joining me to experience this with me. We're going to go over several different things, but first I want to go over the pieces of equipment you need to make this perfect cup of coffee happen. Okay. Um, first and foremost, the grinder. Okay. You can get this grinder at Walmart for around $23 or $24, Publix, Winn-Dixie, etc. Um, now, when you look out in the market, there are grinders from $24 all the way to $240. I'm going to tell you now that this one from Walmart works just as effectively as the one that costs $240. Okay. Next, we're going to need coffee beans. Okay, now I weigh mine to have an exact measurement. I would recommend you all do the same. So for today's container, which is about eight or 10 cups, um, I used 40, 40 to 45 grams of coffee beans. Okay, now you can use a digital scale for those at home that have them for in their kitchens. Use it, now you can go anywhere from 40 to 50 grams of coffee, okay? Make sure it's whole bean. Next, you're gonna need a French press, okay? Now we're gonna get to how this operates shortly, but this is the most important item, second to the coffee. Lastly, you need some sort of thermal, or uh, they make water kettles that are electric, um, the temperature you want to keep this water kettle at is around 200, 198 to 200 degrees. That's your perfect temperature. Any hotter, you can burn the coffee oils. Any colder, the coffee oils won't release correctly from the coffee beans. Okay? So, let's go ahead and get started. I want to talk about uh, three or four really important things before we begin. Number one, the water. The type of water you use to make your coffee is the most important. Um, people use distilled, people use filtered. Um, for today, we're using filtered water, okay? If you use tap water, whatever type of water you use for your coffee is going to affect the taste of that perfect cup of coffee. Secondly, um, the coffee bean. Obviously, if you've done any research, you understand that any store-bought coffee you buy has been on the shelf, whether it's already ground or it's whole grain, has been on the shelf at least six months, okay? The best bet is to find a lo local coffee shop that roasts their own coffee beans, okay? By doing that, you're getting the freshest coffee you can in the area. The reason it's been sitting on the shelf for six months at the local stores is it has to come from the country to this country, get dispersed to the distributors. The distributors have to sell it to the providers and the providers bring it to the storefront. And all that time it takes around six months. So those three things are really important. Um, water, coffee, and then your grind. Now I'm using a blade grinder, okay? When you're using a blade grinder, you have to be very careful not to overheat the coffee bean. If you hold it down for too long, you can burn the coffee and the coffee oils, okay? So I'll show you the method I use to make sure we ensure the coffee oils don't get burnt. And then lastly is the type of grind you want to use. Um, for espresso or... Um, yeah, for, for espressos, people use a very, very fine grind. For today, for our perfect cup of coffee, we're going to do a medium to coarse grind. And I'm going to show you how to achieve that. Okay, let's get started. So, we're going to open our grinder. Check for any obstructions in there. We are good to go. We're going to take our 40, 42 grams of coffee. We're going to place it in that grinder. Okay. 
We're going to make sure the lid's closed. Now, the trick is I do the one, two, three method, okay? So I count one, two, three, pulse. 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 And so on and so forth. I do it for about, I do it till I pulse around 20 times. I'm not going to make you guys sit through me counting, but I'm going to continue. Now, if you take a look here, you can see that we have a medium to coarse grind. It's not powder. There still are nice pieces of coffee bean in there. Now, I'm going to do it a couple more times, um, but the coarser the grind, it's not a bad thing. Now I think we're ready. Okay, so. Now we have our coffee beans ground. Next step is to put them in our French press. Now, not all French presses traditionally are the same. However, for the most part, they are. Um, you want to look for a French press, if you can see this, with a screen that curves around the edges, okay? All of them will have a screen at the bottom, but you want one with a screen that curves around the edges. And what that does is that keeps a nice tight seal against the glass cylinder when we push our press down. That keeps from getting pieces of coffee into your cup of coffee, which makes your coffee even better if you ask me. But for intents and purposes, we're not gonna, we're gonna try to strain all those out. So once you've got your plunger out, you're gonna take your glass and first and foremost we're going to add these in okay now Next comes the water. Again, earlier I told you how important the temperature of the water was, okay? I have already used my thermometer and I know for a fact that this water is exactly around 199 degrees. The range you're shooting for is from 198 to 200, okay? Now, let's get this water on this coffee. When you're pouring in, you wanna make sure you cover every bean that you've ground, you've ground and you want to get everything completely covered okay very very important once you get everything covered you need to make sure you have a timer on hand the steeping time i shoot for is between four minutes and five minutes um, around four minutes is an, an adequate enough time for the coffee oils to release from the bean. Uh, after five minutes, you, your temperature's already dropped in the water that it's really not making that much of a difference. So um, four minutes for a, a lighter brew towards five minutes for a darker roast. We are really struggling here. There's plenty of water in this thing. Hang on. Okay. We don't want to bring it to the very top. If we bring it to the very top, it can be very, very difficult to pour, especially when you're pouring down to a, a low cup. 
My advice when you're using a French press and you filled the French press, bring the cup to the French press. Okay, so we have started our timer. We have to wait but four minutes. We'll see you in a second. Welcome back to the Chef's Corner. We've been waiting for approximately four and a half minutes. Uh, like I said, anywhere from four to five minutes. I like my coffee a little stronger. Um, I can't stress enough how important this step is of making coffee in a French press. The last and final step is the press. Now, the trick is to use just the weight of your hand. You don't push it to the bottom quickly. You let it go slowly. And by going slowly, you're allowing that screen to do its job and to catch all the coffee grains. Now, if you do this too fast, you will chew your coffee. If you do it too slow, you'll have cold coffee. So you want to do it with just the weight of your hand, slowly and steady. Um, and once we get it to the bottom, we'll be ready to pour. Um, do -do -do. And we are almost there. Okay. Now I have two wonderful colleagues that have volunteered to try this perfect cup of coffee. Um, as always, ladies first. Okay, there you have it. That's my version of the perfect cup of coffee. Thanks again for joining us on this episode of Chef's Corner. My name's Trey Goodwin, and we'll see you next time.